Welcome back for you and this is our last lesson in this particular unit um, so you should find yourself ready for the unit test very very shortly. Our topic today is rate of change and our goal I can use the slope of a secant to approximate the instantaneous rate of change of an object at any given points. Um, so in the last lesson we found average rate of change using the slope of a secant um, instantaneous rate of change is what's going on right now. So I used the example in the last one of going to Windsor. Um, when you go to Windsor your average speed is this is the total distance that you travel divided by the total time that it got there and that's your average rate of change. Along the way your car's speedometer tells you your instantaneous rate of change. Sometimes you could be going 60 kilometers an hour, sometimes you could be going 100 kilometers an hour and your speedometer tells you what it is. So is there some way we can find instantaneous rate of change from a graph or from a function um, over at any given specific period of time. So if we want to look at how fast something is changing at any given moment, we're looking for the slope of a tangent line, not the secant line. So let's have a look at this graph here. The slope of the secant, we, would, we put our dot on and we joined the two points and we found our average rate of change because I told you it didn't matter what happened in between I'm only concerned with the end conditions. Well now we are concerned with the instantaneous conditions. So there's a couple different ways to estimate the instantaneous rate of change and for this particular function we want to do it for this point here the point one one. Now our method number one is to pick another point on the function and take the slope of the secant line between them. So I'm going to pick another nice point on this function and it looks like this one's probably the nicest point I can find. Uh, I don't know what the equation of this function is although it looks like it's probably cubic. Um, we want to find the slope between those two. That looks like a pretty straight line and we would estimate the slope of the tangent. Um, so I'm going to draw on or move this uh, secant line so that we can actually see what we're doing. But we're just going to take the slope of it the way we would normally take the slope of something. We need the coordinates. This has coordinates 1, 1. And this new one has coordinates 1.25, 2.25. So 1.25 for the x right there, uh, comma 2.25 for our y coordinate. So remember our slope as always is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And plugging those numbers in we get 2.25 minus 1, that's this minus this, over our x's 1.25 minus 1, that was this, take away this. So 2.25 minus 1 is 1.25 and 1.25 minus 1 is 0 0.25. Well, how many quarters are there in $1.25? There are 5. So the slope of this is 5. Now we don't know what the units here are so we can just say it has a slope of 5. So it's changing pretty rapidly at this point. Certainly a lot more rapidly than down here where we have a much shallower slope of the tangent and even more rapidly than right here where our slope of the tangent would be zero and there would be no instantaneous rate of change so the change would have been st stopped there if we were looking at that. Now let's look at method number two. I'm looking at the same graph. Instead of drawing on finding the slope of a secant we're going to actually find the slope of the tangent by drawing on that tangent line and finding another point on the tangent line. So where's a nice point on the tangent line? Um, that looks like a decent one right there. Uh, what are the coordinates of that point? It looks like 1.25 for my x and 3 for my y. And of course, this is still the point 1, 1, because we're finding the same thing. Now, let's see if there's any difference between method 1 and method 2. So, um, m equals 
y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and our y2 is 3 and we're going to subtract 1 and that came from here and here and our x is 1.25 and 1 we're going to go 1.25 minus 1 so that's 3 oh and it's not 1.25 is it Ooh, that's 1.5 so that should be 1.5 and let's change it over here to 1.5 minus 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2 and 1.5 minus 1 is 0 0.5 and 2 divided by a half is 4. So there is a little bit of a difference. I've got 5 here and I've got 4 here and that's actually a fairly big difference. Now which one is um, more accurate? I'm going to say this one's more accurate because we're actually finding the slope of the tangent rather than a slope of the secant and remember the slope of the tangent is what we actually want. Uh, what about if we don't have a graph? What if we can't find those points? Um, I'm going to show you this little uh, this little demonstration here and we're going to say that finding the slope of the secant is going to be sufficient provided one thing. Let's take a look at this. Uh, let's say I want to find the slope at this red point. The slope of the tangent is that red line. Now if I take the slope of the green line, I'm not going to have anything anywhere near that red line. So estimating a slope of the, this red slope of the tangent by this green secant is probably not a good thing. But what happens if I move this point closer? It doesn't want to move closer. What happens if I move this point closer? Okay, something's wrong here. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. I had to switch web browsers, so you may notice a slight difference where, where the points are. but. Anyway, what I wanted to show you is that I want to estimate the slope of this tangent line, um, but I don't know another point on that tangent line. So I know two points on this function. I've got these two points. So what if I drag this point closer? Notice that as I'm going closer, the slope of my secant obviously is changing. And as I'm getting closer and closer, my secant is becoming very, very close to a tangent line. So if I used these two points as my slope of the secant, my slope of the secant would be much closer to the slope of the tangent than had I used this point way over here. But we can get even better than that. What if I move these points even closer and closer and closer? What if they were almost right on top of each other? Now that's pretty darn close. And when we're finding points, if I have a function, we can find points that are really, really close together. Notice that if I'm going to find the function at negative 1, uh, I can use like negative 0.9 as my other x. And if I have two x coordinates, I can find two y coordinates using the function, um, the equation of the function and then I can work from there. So the main thing here is that we're going to use the slope of a secant because I can find two points on the function. I can't find another point on the tangent if I don't know what the slope is, but I can find another point on the function. And I can find any point I want on the function, so I'm going to find two points that are very, very, very close together, so close together they might as well be the same point. And in that case I can get a pretty good estimate of the slope of the tangent. So let's see how we actually do that. Okay, uh, now I wrote this out here. You can read that if you want, but I've just said most of that. So, uh, example two find the slope of the tangent line of f at x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 2 uh, when x is 2. Sorry about that. I don't know what that error message was. Uh, to find the slope of any line, we need two points. Since we want the tangent when x is 2, we need to find another point very close to where x is 2. Just slightly bigger than 2 would be sufficient, say 2.001. 
Uh, it could be slightly less than 2 as well. We could choose 1.999 if we wanted to. Three digits after the decimal point is probably enough. Uh, so how do we do this? Well, first of all, we need those points. I need to know what the y values are. Right now, I only have the x values. Okay, I know I want the slope of the tangent when x is 2, but I need the y values, because, and that's what this is, remember? f at x, 2 is going to be y2, and f at x1 is going to be our y1. That's what those f at x's mean. So let's actually find those. Um, we're going to let this one be our uh, x1, and we're going to let this one be our x2. So let's find out what f at x1 is. Well, since f at x1 uh, in this case is 2, we're actually finding f at 2. So let's plug it into our f equation. So 2 bracket 2 squared minus 3 bracket 2 uh, plus 2. 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. Minus 6 plus 2. 8 minus 6 is 2 plus 2 is 4. So one of the points we have is the point 2, that was our x1, comma 4. So that's one point. Uh, the other point, f at x2, we're going to use um, 2.001. It's really, really, really close to 2, so this secant should be really, really, really close to being a tangent. So we have to plug it in. 2 bracket 2.001 squared minus 3 bracket 2 plus 2. Now you can just plug that all into your calculator. And if you plug that into the calculator, you're going to get, oh, where'd that go? Uh, 4.005002. So 4.005002. And this is one time on the calculator you need to keep all of those digits. And I want to point out that uh, I made a little correction while I was on pause here. Um, this I had put in as 2 before. It should be 2.001. So please make that correction as well if you didn't notice that I'd made it. So now we're going to plug this in because I have my second point. Uh, the second point that I'm going to use is going to be 2.001 comma 4.005002. Now those two numbers are very close to being the same point, which is good because a tangent is only at one point. So if I've got these two numbers that are so very, very close to being the same point, um, I should be able to approximate the slope of the tangent. Now the, the key word here is approximate. So I'm going to plug these in. My f at x2 minus f at x1 is going to be 4.005002 minus 4. So 4.005002 minus 4 divided by 2.001 minus 2. 2.001 minus 2. And what do we get? And we are actually, for this one, going to get 5 point, what was that? 0, 0, 2. 0, 0. Now, this little bit here um, is so cl it's so close to 5 that it is probably 5. So we can say, therefore, the slope of the tangent at x equals 2 is 5. And it's probably 5. Like this is so really, really close to 5 that that probably is what it is. Um, so here, a couple of things where people make mistakes is that when they pick a number very, very close to 2, they pick both the x and the y. You can't do that. You pick the x, and then you have to figure out the y, which is what we did here. You can't just pick 2.001 and 4.001 uh, because that is not going to be on there. You have to actually figure out what your y coordinate is going to be. So don't make that mistake. 
pick a value of x that's very, very close to the value of x you want to find the tangent for, uh, and then sub it into the y, so that for um, sub it into the f at x, so that you can get the y coordinate. Okay, and then once you have two points, any time you have two points, you can find the slope of the uh, the line between them, and those were the two points that we used. Okay, so you got some questions to do.